so it's also important for you because of your openness and especially because you have an open G center, which is in, which is that diamond that's in the center of your body graph, it's important for you to resist over uh, basically trying too hard to figure out who you are. You're essentially here to be wise about all different types of identities, all different flavors of life, all different beings so that you can remind us, you can remind us all that really underneath we're all just beings of divine light, right? And so it's like the rest of us kind of have like a wrapping paper around us and like you get to basically be, um, you get to be just the present inside. You get to be the person who reminds us all that we're, we're basically all the same. Yeah. And I feel like all the reflectors I know are really in touch with this idea. We're all divinely connected and we're all souls and we're all connected through spirit. And I think that reflectors better than anyone are, are here to embody that for the rest of us, which is really beautiful. And it's not that you don't know who you are, it's that um, for, from the reflectors that I've met and that I know, they definitely have a sense of self. Like, mm -hmm. you have a sense of self. You have mm -hmm. a unique soul that comes and wears this human body graph architecture yeah. that codes your DNA and you experience these, these different themes that play out in your life and you have these strengths that make you you, but then you also have your soul and it's totally normal and perfect for you to be um, trying on different chameleon aspects of people and you can try them on and then you can let them go when it's ready. It's totally okay for you to evolve yourself to move evolve. with groups and mold and create new identities for yourself that you can be a part of but then also recognize that you just this is a this is an element or a part in the grand play of being a human so also not to make not to take it so seriously like a good actor in a play takes on all these characteristics and, and roles and then at the end of the day comes back to their true essence. Mm. Mm -hmm. I love that. And it's all part of the play. It's all part of the fun and enjoyment and it's it's not, it's you're the embodiment of the child. Um, even mm. as you get older, definitely you get to play and have uh, this childlike wonder um, because your emotional cue that you are in alignment with your design is surprise. Mm. So think back to children or when you were a child and what was it like when you received the, the present that you mm. wanted mm -hmm. to get? Uh, it's that element of surprise and that's pretty much your childlike wonder that you get to experience every day, even as you get older. Like, you have this innocence, this childlike ability to navigate life with and see it through a very unique lens and perspective. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. With that being said, though, it's important to understand and manage your expectations, right? Uh, because, because you become your environment and you get to sample, uh, you know, basically being like the, all the people that you're around, if you're always placing expectations on uh, what it means to be in that environment, then that's going to lead to disappointment, which is basically your cue um, that you either need to manage your expectations or you need to shift and move into a different environment that feels correct for you. And you might also be aware that you might, and it's perfectly normal for you to have tears or cry. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah, it's good for anyone. Good for anyone, but it might also, and also to let your family or partners know that you might be experiencing, for whatever reason, however the moon could be affecting you or your own internal cycle or hormonal cycle as a woman, if you are a woman, or um, different energies you might feel just sadness or if you're not if you're in trying to have a relationship with someone and it's an unrequited love and you might feel you, you are more prone to sadness and disappointment than say other types mm -hmm. and all the other types have different 
emotional cues. And also, it's something to wear lightly as well, too, because um, when you make friends with your disappointment, you start to understand that it's really just a signpost that it's basically a gift from the universe telling you that you need to pivot into something else. So it's either, um, like I said, either you need to pivot and move into a different environment, or um, you just need to figure out how you can manage your expectations a little bit better, or how you can get back to that childlike state of wonder and say, you know what, when I release that I have expectations about something and I put in, I put forth the effort and I don't necessarily have expectations about what this environment or what these people are going to feel like, then it gives me the opportunity to really see everything um, as just what it is, right? And that's really the beauty of being a reflector is basically just getting to sample with all these different flavors of life. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of flavors, especially in this day and age. Oh, yeah, yeah. totally. It's also important for you to know that um, as a reflector, you're also what's called a non-emotional type. So actually, your baseline is for you to be cool, calm, and collected. But because you naturally absorb emotions of people around you, energy of people around you, that may lead you to feeling like you're the sensitive one, or maybe you've been told that you're sensitive, but it's also important to understand that your sensitivity is really your strength. Your sensitivity is, is your superpower that tells the world around you basically when something is, is going well or when something needs to be corrected. And um, it also, also because of your openness, you're actually, in a sense, the most resilient type of them all because you have this ability to um, take in all this information and then also let it flow through you and understand that it's not for you to hold on to, but rather here just to give you information and then you can let it go. Mm-hmm. And if you ever feel like you're absorbing too much energy or you might feel the thing with this is that it, it seems invisible because it affects your energy and it's essentially into your mind and your thoughts and in your body that your a family member might start to notice that you might feel be a little off. Or if your child is a reflector, you might notice that his energy or their energy is um, amplified or even uh, could be cranky or... But then also check in with yourself as their partner um, that, oh, wait, okay, is it me or is it them? And as a reflector, it's, you have to understand where the other begins and where mm. they end or, and vice versa. It goes both ways. It's this like multiple energy exchange between two people. Um, so being clear of boundaries, where I begin, where they, where the other person begins. And if you ever feel too overwhelmed with too much of things that you might feel is not yours, I highly recommend stepping into nature mm -hmm. and being in a natural environment because the earth's energetics and even nature itself will receive your energy and allow it to peel off of you. And if you like going for a walk, um, and this is great for all people that have a lot of open centers, going for walks in nature, taking time to go sit outside, even if it's cold. Um, if you live in a cold climate, bundling up and um, or making a point to get some sort of um, connection with nature at some point. I'm sure there's a lot of options, finding a way to just make it work for you to discharge and connect with the trees, with the elements, maybe even animals. Having a pet could definitely be helpful because as nature and or plants, yeah. plants could definitely, if you have your indoor house plants, you might feel a large affinity because they will take that energy. They'll help you remove that energy. The natural kingdom will assist you in that way or whatever is whatever works for you. And working around children as well, because children are so pure and they have a lot less conditioning and therefore they're going to project a lot less negative energy. And I know a lot of reflectors that tend to be gravitated towards children. My One of my good friends, she is a physical therapist for, for children. And she always says that it helps her like reconnect with her sense of self and like find her ground. 
um, because children are basically just unapologetically themselves. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So those are all the different ways to get back to yourself and discharge unwanted energy that is you've absorbed or taken yeah. in and filtering it in a constructive way. And this is super important too, because people are always going to be, um, seeing themselves within you. And so they're going to reflect whatever, however they see themselves, they're going to reflect and project it onto you as well. So, um, if somebody has a high sense of self and they have a high sense of self love and self worth, they're going to see that in you as well. But if they maybe don't have those things, they might project that onto you. So it's really important for you to understand that um, if people are mirroring that back from you, that it's not you. And that's where stepping into nature, um, stepping into nature, spending time with animals or children, whatever it is feels authentic to you. Um, that's why that's so important and can be very therapeutic. Most definitely. Also, as a reflector, you might find that community living can be a bit of a challenge for you. The thing to remember is that taking time for yourself is in a sense the most selfless thing that you can do. Yeah. Because when you take care of yourself, you're reflecting back to everybody else that they can take care of themselves as well. Yes, we're entering into an age of self-care and that it's okay to honor ourselves mm -hmm. and do what feels right and follow our intuition and leave situations if it's just not, if you're not feeling it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like one of uh, our reflector girlfriend of mine just wasn't, she was invited to a party and she, it got to be the day of the party and she just wasn't feeling it. And what just didn't come. And as her friend, we had a choice, like, you know, the old paradigm would have been like, oh, what? where is she at? Why is she not there? But because we love her and we see her and we recognize her for who she is, we were like, oh, she's whatever. It's totally fine. Mm -hmm. Like, you're doing you, boo. And that is perfect. And we love you just as you are. And, you know, the minute that we, you are able to honor yourself and communicate that around the right people mm. that are gonna honor you and see you for who you are. The people that matter don't mind. The Absolutely. people that that mind don't matter. And that is just the crucial, as we move into these new, these new paradigms of human interaction and relationships, being amongst those that care for you and that accept you for who you are and honoring you and you just say who you are are going to love you regardless. Absolutely. Yeah. I love that. So in the working world and in your career, if you are at a point in your life where you're wondering how to utilize your energy in an effective way that's in alignment with your design, you are here to evaluate and direct and you see the whole picture. Like mm. you're able to see the whole picture of people, situations, and you're able to evaluate with your own individual strengths what is out of place, what could be used, what could have a little more refinement, where, um, what is different, who is unique, or if people need guidance, for example, or if people come to you and they need uh, guidance in their life, um, you can help them evaluate and see so clearly what is out of place depending on your own unique strengths within your genetic imprint of yeah. the human design blueprint. Yeah, you essentially finish the whole creative process. So, you know, manifestors, they initiate ideas into existence. And then, you know, projectors kind of guide and show us how to... Um, how to make that into reality and they kind of get everybody to work together generators and manifesting generators do the the actual work of creating it and then reflectors look at the whole process and say okay let's just refine this just a little bit or these are the tweaks that we need or um here's how we can you know just change it just a little bit so that it comes full circle into completion yes i almost like to call you all the uh, omega Mm -hmm. The end of the circle until the circle of life restarts itself mm. once again. 
Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And, you know, projectors, they see really narrow. So projectors usually thrive on developing a niche and getting really clear on one specific thing. Reflectors, on the other hand, tend to do better seeing wide. So they see the whole group, the big picture. Um, they're kind of in a perfect world. They would be the person that's at the center of their tribe that everybody comes to for advice as like the evaluator of the health of the tribe and how everybody else is doing. And in a work situation, it's kind of the same thing. The reflector sits in the middle of the whole project and everybody comes to the reflector basically so the reflector can mirror back to them um, how the project is doing and what the project uh, needs in a sense. Yes. and. It will be natural for you to see everyone's potential and almost be the oracle uh, yeah. and be able to communicate to them what you see the highest potential could be. And then that way, when others start living in their potential, mm. you have an element of surprise and, and then delight and, and be like, oh, wow. You're, when you see other people living in their highest expression of themselves, that is your greatest joy. And you get to be so energized by that too. And I think one of the biggest myths is that we're like reflectors being a non-energy type, that they don't have energy, but reflectors have the potential to have all the energy because they're in the middle of the circle getting energized by everyone. And when they're with their right, correct group of people who are inviting them in for their wisdom and who are you know, living healthy and aligned the way that the reflector, um, they're living healthy and aligned because they're basically listening to the reflector's advice, then the reflector gets to be really lit up and inspired and full of life force. And feel like you have a purpose. Because you do. Yeah. You do. Mm -hmm. Everybody is, everybody on this planet is needed for yes. their uniqueness. Um, but especially you being so unique, being 1% of the population. We really need you guys right now. And we need you for all of your, you know, we need you for all of your sensitivities and your compassion and your empathy. Um, because that's really what's going to launch us into this next paradigm of really, like, fully understanding ourselves and understanding are how we uniquely fit within a group of people.